So our next speaker is Inesh Wright, and uh, she's going to tell us about her experiences formalising nilpotent groups in Lean. Over to you, Inesh. Yeah. So hi, my name is Inesh. Um, I had very little Lean experience when I started this summer, um, so it's been a real <laughs> journey learning a lot of this um, maths. So I'm just going to start first with the maths involved and then move on to the lean. Um, so the first things that um, I'd say I needed a bit of background knowledge is just a definition of the centre of a group, which is a subgroup containing all of the elements which commute with all of the other elements in a group. And the commutator of a group, um, where you can define the commutator of two elements of a group as being, uh, let's say you define the commutator of A and B as A times B times A to the minus 1 times B to the minus 1. That can be extended to define the commutator of a group, which is the smallest subgroup containing all of the commutators of elements of G. You know that that's not that set itself is not necessarily a group. So this smallest subgroup, which contains those elements, is essentially the closure of that set. Um, so it does contain elements which aren't in themselves commutators, but are in fact multiples of commutators. With that in mind, um, we can start to define nilpotent groups. Um, the way that this is done is by defining an upper central series. Um, this is done, it's an inductive definition. So we define the zeroth term to be the trivial group, the first term to be the centre of the group, like defined in the previous slide. And then we inductively define each um, centre of the group as being for all of the x's in G, such that the general commutator of x and that any other y is included in the previous term. Using that definition, um, each term of the upper central series is the ith centre, and it's a subgroup of the next term. Each term in the upper central series um, should become larger and larger, um, so that eventually, if the group is nilpotent, that terminates. What that means is that there exists an n, such that the nth term in the upper central series is equal to the group itself, and the nilpotency class of G is the smallest n, such that that's true. You can also define nilpotent groups um, using an equivalent definition with descending central series. Um, so here we have an example of a lower central series, which is a series of subgroups such that the first term or the zeroth term is G, and each successive term becomes smaller instead of larger. Each successive term is inductively defined as the general commutator of G and the term before it, as demonstrated in the slide previously. And then in this definition, the group G would be nilpotent, if the lower central series terminates at the trivial subgroup. Both of these definitions are equivalent and they actually give the same nilpotency class as well. So it's all well defined. Um, we started, so I've been working on um, building a bit of API for nilpotent groups um, to contribute to MATLAB. Um, and so Kevin helped me to write the beginnings of the definitions for this API. Um, so we have here the inductive definition of the upper central series using an auxiliary function and a step function, um, which allows us to prove that the set which the set which contains the elements we want is, is in fact a subgroup and also a proof that this is normal. Um, we also have the definition of the nilpotency class here. And in the same set of definitions, we also have a, a instruction of the lower central series and we have a con we have a proof that um, is there equivalent definitions to say that you have a terminating um, upper central series is equivalent to it being nilpotent and that's equivalent to it having a terminating lower central series. Um, we also included in the same definitions, um, in the same set, um, definitions of ascending and descending central series, proofs of the upper central series is ascending, lower central series is descending, um, et cetera, et cetera, just so that we um, started with all the definitions that we needed to start to prove some properties about um, the nilpotent groups for MATLAB. So from there on, this is where I started to get involved. Um, I have a list of interesting properties, things which might be fun to prove, and I started working through them um, one by one. So here I have a list of things like singleton groups are nilpotent, um, or subgroups of nilpotent groups are nilpotent, things like that. Um, which is where I started. I haven't finished all of these yet. Um, hopefully I'll have some time in the next few weeks to finish them. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm about halfway through this by now. Um, the, the only other maths thing that 
I wanted to make a note of before I started talking was quotients. Um, when I was taught about group theory, um, we were taught that the quotients is like a set of cosets of a group by a subgroup. Um, that is, in fact, just a model, and that's demonstrated in the lean definition. Um, so quotients themselves are not exactly... Then the coset model is just a model. In lean, they're defined as... Um, it's an API which uses the universal property to give you the same proofs as if you used the coset model. So, this is where I started to write some lean. So the first proof, this instance that the subsingleton group is in fact nilpotent. This is quite trivially true because a subsingleton group has to be the trivial group. And you know that the zeroth term of the lower central series, which is the trivial group, is also equal to the group itself. So you have a finite lower central series. When I moved on to start trying to prove some other things, um, I came up with a whole new set of um, more simple definitional rewrite lemmas and other intermediate lemmas, which I sort of needed along the way. Um, partly exacerbated, I think, by the lower central series not having had, because it wasn't used for the original definition, we didn't have so many um, lemmas written into the original set of um, definitions of the original construction. Um, so I have this proof underneath that the lower central series is normal because the as you can see in the construction here, that's not included in the actual definition. Um, and that's just an induction proof. The trivial the zeroth term of the lower central series is the trivial group, which is um, normal by definition, I suppose. And, um, and each successive term is the general commutator of two normal subgroups. So therefore, that's normal. The other things that we needed to prove this, um, to make to do this quotient proof that if the quotient of the center of a group is nilpotent, then the group itself is nilpotent, was some monotonicity and lemmas about homomorphisms. So I have this um, lemma saying that um, the upper central series is monotone. Um, that is true because. For each term in the, for each, everything in the n plus one term, it can be expressed as the general commutator of a term, so x plus y, x minus one, y to minus one. And because we know that the upper central series is normal, we know the definition of that in lean is to say that like y times x times y to the minus one is x. Um, and by the closure of the multiplication, we get that the general commutator is in the that as well. Um, the other proof on here is this map function, uh, this map proof, that if you have a subjective function, that the upper central series is functorial. Um, what that means is that if you map the upper central series through a, sub through a subjective function, then you get the upper central series. If that's a subgroup of the upper central series of the output group. That is um, also an induction proof. Quite a lot of these are. Um, with a trivial base case because um, the upper central series, why? Uh, oh, because the zeroth term is um, trivial, the trivial group, and so you have the inequality about trivial groups. And the inductive step um, is it uses the subjectivity requirement to, um, uh, and the fact that if something is um, in the lemma of the map, then it's um, in the output group. Fortunately, we got to this point and realized that it's um, a bit messier. Um, so not, you don't just have to prove that it's true for all elements in the set that you've taken the closure of. You also have to true that it's, prove that it's true for the identity element, that it's true for any inverses of elements, and it's true for the multiple of elements, like if you, the product of two elements. Um, it kind of makes the proofs a bit longer and a bit messier using this closure induction, um, but it, the, it uses the same um, ideas. And the fun thing about the lower central series version is that there is no surjectivity requirement. This one is true for all homomorphisms. Um, we also have an anti-monotonicity lemma for the lower central series, um, which again uses this closure induction. And the same um, normality um, lemma that I was talking about earlier, where um, to be normal in lean as, as a subgroup is defined to have y times x times y to the minus one equaling x. No, sorry, that's wrong. 
if a group, subgroup is normal, y times x times y to the minus 1 is also in the subgroup. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Sort of along the way, as I was struggling with baffling quotients and things like that, I um did some, I started to build some of the other um, lemmas, which were the properties that I discussed a bit earlier. And one of those was the proof that um, if you have a um, nilpotent group, then all of its subgroups are nilpotent. Um, you can use this by um, trapping it below the lower central series. So the lemma at the top says that the lower central series of a subgroup or the nth term of the lower central series of the subgroup is always contained in the lower central series of the group. You can then use that to say that if the lower central series of the group reaches um, the trivial group and the lower central series of the subgroup is always less than or equal to that, then for the same n, it must be less than or equal to the trivial group, which means that you found an n such that the term, the lower central series is the trivial and therefore nilpotent. So that gives you a full proof that all subgroups of nilpotent group are nilpotent. And I finally got to this quotient center proof, um, which turned out to be much more complicated than I was hoping for. Um, in this case, um, if you, we have that the, the quotient of the center of the group is nilpotent, and we want to prove that the group is nilpotent. We do this by using the, um, the suck of the index. So if we have a term, we use, we're using the lower central series and we're saying that if we found um, an nth term of the lower central series that gives you the trivial group, then um, if you use n plus one, then you get the group itself. And the reason this is true is, well, in one direction, it's trivial um, because you're, um, you have something which is less than or equal to um, the, the trivial group. Um, in the other direction, um, it's because because of the map function that we wrote earlier about the lower central series and the hypothesis about the quotient of the center of group being nilpotent. We have that if you map um, the quotient of the center with the lower central series, then you get the trivial group. So all you have to do is prove that any element in the lower central series of the n, the n plus one term of the lower central series is one. As the n plus one term is a general commutator, that's equivalent to proving that it's commutative or that it's a subset of the center, which is um, given by the half line halfway through the proof, um, which is the that functorial proof. The last set of lemmas that I've written this summer, um, I have yet to um, try and PR these ones, so the code might be a bit messier. Um, is this proof about the kernel of a homomorphism? Um, we have that if the kernel of a homomorphism is contained in the center of the input group and the output group is nilpotent, then the input group itself is also nilpotent. And um, again, we do a similar thing where we um, use the definition of the lower central series and its nilpotency and um, use the n plus one term um, if it's nilpotent at n. and use the lemma we've written at the above to trap um, the terms of the lower central series within the center of G. And then that gives you the trivial group when you move up a term and you try and take the commutators of the center of the group. The lemma at the top is the intermediate lemma um, that I needed for this proof, which is to say that if the lower central series of GN is in the center of the group, that the next term is trivial. And again, that's because we're taking the general commutators of things which are commutative. Um, and so they always come out as one. So the group itself is trivial. At this point, I've proven about half of the things um, I started with, um, with a bunch of these intermediate lemmas along the way, monotonicity and um, the upper central series being functorial. Um, I still have some other things which I haven't got to yet. The direct product of two nilpotent groups is nilpotent. If the quotient group of a normal subgroup is nilpotent, the group itself is nilpotent. Um, and also something I came across the way, which I came along across the way, which I thought was interesting, is that um, I've proven that the upper central series is monotone and the reverse for the lower central series. But the definition that we've written into the API for ascending and descending series is actually not strong enough to prove that as far as we can tell. You're welcome to try. Maybe I'm wrong, um, but I thought that was quite interesting. 
So I've got um, definitely a couple more functions or lemmas worth um, to PR and a couple more interesting things to start thinking about formalizing in mean. Um, but, you know, a couple of weeks later, we have we've got all the definitions now and enough to start building some more fun proofs along the way. So thank you very much for Kevin to Kevin for helping me with all of the definitions and all of my crazy maths questions. And that's where I'm at now.